Okay, so chapter five, sharing the road. Um, real quick, pedestrians, walkers, joggers should be on the left side facing oncoming traffic. I think we've talked about that. Um, you know, children, watch out for children. If you live in a neighborhood where you know there's little children, use some extra caution. Um, you know, our street's got a lot of little kids on it, so uh, we typically have to go slower, especially if we see them outside. Motorcycles, okay. So, motorcycles is a big thing in chapter five. When it starts getting nice out after the winter, um, anybody notice the signs that say, start seeing motorcycles, okay? It's, I mean, it's to draw, it's to so that you do that. It's to draw your, yourself to be more attentive to seeing them, looking for them. Because one of the biggest things that people say when they get in an accident with a motorcycle is, I didn't see it. Okay, so you have to see it. All right. Um, they've got to follow everything, every law, every rule that you do. About the only thing that's different is um, they their headset that's sometimes built into the helmet that's like Bluetooth. I don't know all the technology of it because I don't have a motorcycle, but um, they're allowed to have that kind of like Bluetooth in the helmet or whatever. And then they can have two motorcycles side by side in one lane, unlike a car. All right. So 50% uh, of all motorcycle accidents happen at intersections. A car is going to brake a lot further back than a motorcycle would. A motorcycle is going to be going faster and then it's going to brake closer to where it's going to stop. So it might seem like they abruptly stop. So have a little extra following distance and just know that at an intersection, that stopping is a little different, all right? And then the other thing is, it'll happen at an intersection. I didn't see the motorcycle. You, well, you have to see it. Be on the lookout, you have to. Lane sharing, already kind of talked about it. They can have two side by side, all right? If you pass them, Go ahead, go ahead all the way over to the other lane to pass. Don't be like in the middle because they're only in half the lane. All right. Um, I rode on there mowing the grass into the road is illegal. They changed that law a couple years ago in Illinois. You're not actually allowed to, you know, when you mow, some of you may not mow, I don't know. But when you mow, there's grass coming out the side of your lawnmower. You're not allowed to blow that onto the street. Okay, same with like yard debris keep leaves, keep grass, all that stuff off the street. That's like ice to a motorcycle. One little pebble can send a motorcycle into an accident. So something that can be slick and their tires can spin because they're a lot lighter is super dangerous. So don't mow the grass into uh, the road. All right. That's basically it on motorcycles. We're not going to get into the smaller gas powered bikes, things like that. Um, scooters, mopeds, and, and just bicycles. You, you've got to stop at stop signs and do all those things. Um, I know I've got um, somebody who bikes in our neighborhood and always goes down our road. It seems like almost every morning at the same time. And I know sometimes he doesn't stop at all the stop signs. Uh, one time I was turning and Luckily, I, he wears yellow and I could see him coming and I knew he'd probably be out. So I kind of like made a point to look um, just because I knew he'd be there. But if I didn't do that, I might have hit him because he didn't stop at a stop sign. So I don't know if he knows that law. Um, did you guys ever have anybody from the police when you were like younger come and talk about bicycle safety or anything like that? They used to. I didn't know if you guys had got that or uh, not. They did it in Brown County, but that was like forever. Yeah. They, I, they know they used to here, um, but I didn't know if they quit that with you guys. It must have been uh, before you, so. Okay, so large vehicles. I'm gonna put this on the overhead. We really are talking mostly about semis here. This isn't a very good picture. I might put a, yeah, I'm gonna put a different picture up. The biggest thing about semis is if it's possible, give them more room, okay? Not blink, blind. Somebody, Brett, wanna hit the lights? That's a pretty good picture. 
picture. So if you're right behind, we're talking about a semi that's got a trailer on it. It's pulling a trailer. All right. Adjust this. So if you're right behind the semi, their rear view mirror is useless, right? The mirror that's, that's up here in the car, they, it's useless for them. So they can't see you right behind them. So if you're very close to them, they absolutely cannot see you whatsoever. There's usually a sign on the back of them that says, if you can read this, you're too close. Do you remember what I said about car lengths and following? You know, if you're going 20 miles an hour, you should have how many car lengths between you and the car in front of you? Two. Two. If you're going 30 miles an hour, how many car lengths? Four. Three. Okay. If you're closer, going 10 or less, what do you need to see? Lower. Lower than license plate. Bottom of the wheels. Make sure you can see the bottom of the wheels. That's for all cars, but semis especially. Semis, you should be just extra distance. Okay. On the right, all right, it's not as bad for them on the right for a blind spot because they're on that side driving, unless we're in London or something. But if you're on, I'm sorry, did I say right? Yeah. Left. They're driving on the left, they're on the right side of the road, they're in the left part of the cab, so they have less of a blind spot, which means they can see more over here from their mirrors. Okay, are you with me? Over here on their right, they have more of a blind spot. So that's why you gotta be very careful passing a semi on their right side. I know sometimes when I'm on the interstate and I've got a semi, and a semi passes another car or passes another semi is usually what happens. And it seems like it takes forever. And then normally when we pass, we've got to see a car where when we go back? Rear view. Rear view. What does their rear view mirror do? Nothing. Nothing in a semi. So they've got to go further up to see it on this side, which we now know their blind spot is bigger. So it's going to seem like it's going to take a long time for them to go back over to the right lane. Be patient, let them get over and go. If it seems like an eternity, wait another minute and then, then try it. But I advise against passing a semi completely on the right because they're, they're going up further because they can't see. And if you get impatient, you're like, all right, I, I can't wait. And you start going and then they're gonna get over and you're where they can't see you, that could be a problem, right? Hope that's common sense. Yeah. And then if you're in front of them, I mean, I don't know why you would want, you would slow down to be close, but that's just something to think about, especially if you're in a smaller car, all right, and you're going slower, hopefully they, they're driving up and they saw you as they were coming up to you, but just remember if they're that close that uh, they can't see you there as well, all right? Questions about the blind spots of a semi? Okay. Um, it also talks about if you pass them, Oh, extra space at an intersection. So if you are, if you're, I'm trying to, if you're at it, if let's say you're coming up to a stoplight and you're going to turn like left at a stoplight and you see that a semi might be turning uh, to your right, might be turning in front of you, you might want to stop a little further back to give them more room or at a stop sign. Probably happens more at stop signs than it does. Cause like I know when you leave like PCS and go down uh, Piper Lane and then you go to like the stop sign that's behind Casey's, there's a lot of trucks that turn there. Okay. So if you're seeing the truck coming up on the right, I would stop further back from the stop sign. So, cause that's a truck route. The trucks will go that way and they'll go the other way to go. They go in front of both schools. They'll go in front of PCS. They'll go in front of South school. Cause those are two truck routes that they always go on. So just be aware of that. Um, at night, if you're going to pass a semi, the fourth bullet point on page 45 says that you need to flick your brights on and off real quick. Your bright lights. You've got regular lights and bright lights. We haven't talked about lights yet. But uh, you change lanes, flick your lights on and off, and then go and pass just so maybe that light kind of flashes in their mirror so it draws attention. They know you're coming. All right, you want them to know. You don't want them to be surprised, okay? Uh, disabled vehicles is the next sec session. If your car breaks down, 
okay, and you pull over, what do you, what's one of the first things you're supposed to do? Turn on your hazard lights or your warning lights, okay? Um, slower vehicles, it talks about at the end. We're not going to get into details with them. Um, one of the things, it's on the top of page 46. Golf carts, side-by-sides, those things, if you're going to make them street legal, they've got to have all those things. Turn signals, brakes, windshields, safety belts, rear view mirror. There's a bunch there. Um, and a police officer will come and they will check everything out. And I believe they give you, I don't know if it's like a, a permit or something that, that says that you're allowed to drive it in town, but they have to check that. Um, snowmobiles. I don't think we have too many snowmobiles in town, but you know, if you live on a country road and you know your neighbor is using a snowmobile a lot, you might want to watch out. Horseback riders, we don't have too many of those that are riding on the road, but watch out for them and what they might drop behind them. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, that's chapter five. So.